All right, if we have a look here, you can see that I've been pulling all the stuff off uh, out from under the dodger. Winches, jammers, all that sort of thing. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to move them all up by the mast. I want to be able to reef the mainsail um, by just moving forward and everything I need to reach is all in one place and it's right there by the mast. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30 foot, 50 year old sailing boat, Marul. have been led um, back to the cockpit by a previous owner and I can see what they were thinking about because there's a there's a line of thinking where you should lead all the lines back to the cockpit for the safety of you you can reef um, you know without leaving the safety of the cockpit it doesn't work that way because you still have to go forward to the mast to put the glue on the ram's horns and you still have to come out of the cockpit to tie the reefing pennants around the bottom of the mainsail so um, we're going to have it all in one position up the front and when you leave the cockpit you can do all the reefing and then you can come back. I just want to have one more word and you might not agree um, that it's fine. I, this whole thing of um, leaving the safety of the cockpit and trying to avoid it wherever possible, I don't like the subconscious implications that that might entail. At some point, sometime in the future, you're going to have to leave the cockpit to do something, you know, like conditions might dictate, you might have some emergency, that something might happen out there on the rest of the boat, you're going to have to go and deal with it. If you've been, <clears throat> if you've been gearing up in your mind that you shouldn't leave the safety of the cockpit, it's going to put you at a bit of a psychological disadvantage because you know some part of your mind will be like, "Oh, I'm I'm going forward to do a risky thing here," and that's just one more difficulty that you might have to overcome. To my way of thinking, if you're on a boat, you should be able to um, be comfortable with the techniques and procedures and the safety steps that you should follow to go anywhere on your boat in any conditions. Okay. Throw, sometimes we get taken to task of not using a harness or whatever when we're in the cockpit and to be honest on a 30 footer we can't really develop the space to you know get enough momentum it's very there's lots of stuff to hang on to but you know like when um, when the conditions dictate and we make a risk assessment we definitely put harnesses on we strap on go forward particularly if you're working on the foredeck I'll always clip on there um, and so you know you want to be comfortable with that you don't want to have this thing in your mind that you're leaving the cockpit and you know this is a this is a big deal it's a big deal once you leave the boat <laughs> into the ocean but um, that that's my two cents on it all right and it's maybe you don't agree and maybe you've got a different philosophy but that, that's just an, another way that someone else out there might be looking at things anyway whatever we're going to go ahead I'm going to finish off doing all this stuff we're going to fill in those holes with resin, we're going to move stuff up uh, up by the mast and, and I'll show you sort of, you know, once it's done, what I've, uh, what I've put together. Okay, so I've taken all the deck fittings away and it's left us with holes in the boat. <laughs> so you can't really have that. So what I'm going to do is just plug them up with epoxy. And what I'm doing, I've just got a, a countersinking bit and just either side of the holes I'm making them conical shaped and what that'll be mean is um, you know I'll, I'll put a bit of thickened epoxy in the bottom here let it nearly go off and then epoxy in at the top so that they all um, connect and when it all goes off and sets what will end up having is an hourglass shaped plug in the actual hole and it can't go up and it can't come down it'll be it'll be in there and not only that is um, counter sinking here it'll clear out any paint dirt whatever and get us back to the the raw material and the epoxy should really stick to that a lot better well 
Well, that's all those holes drilled out, and I'm just going to give it another wipe down with spirits, um, ethanol or methylated spirits, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's, and then after that, I'll do the sanding, you know, but like it's always better to clean off your surfaces before you sand. If you do it afterwards, if you just like tear into there with your sandpaper and go for it, anything that's on the surface will get on the sandpaper and you'll actually scratch it into the bottom of the grooves. So you're better off cleaning it before and after <laughs> you've done your sanding, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I've thickened some epoxy up to its peanut butter and it won't come off anything. Um, and I'm just filling those bottom holes in now that I've, uh, what would you call it, champed at the edge, countersunk. So that will plug the bottom and when it's just about to set, um, then I'll put epoxy in from the top. And because it hasn't set hard yet, it won't be a mechanical bond, it will be a chemical bond and then we'll have as I said, that hourglass shaped plug, blocking up those holes, it'll be waterproof and it won't come out. Famous last word, Dave Hasky. Woohoo! <laughs> we can get away with a lot on this um, this old clans, and because we've got like a lot of solid glass everywhere, with more modern boats, particularly if they've got like a ingrain balsa or a foam core in the roof. You actually, if you're going to fit any deck hardware anywhere, what you really need to do is where you're going to have the holes to fix any new hardware, you, you should actually drill down out of the core and actually backfill it with epoxy, then drill through that and then mount your hardware. Otherwise, if you don't do a really good job of bedding that hardware, water can get in, seep along in your roof and delaminate and destroy it. Um, this clamson is incredibly forgiving because just this section here, there's um, there's really good quality marine ply that's been encased, but the rest of it is just just solid fiberglass. <laughs> it's just it's one of the reasons why I bought the boat. Everything's very very forgiving. Um, well, for just some of it's a little bit rough. We'll come back and we'll we'll sand these off later on. Well, we've got our holes filled and fed. Um, I've sanded them all flush, so they'll just need a lick of paint just to protect the epoxy. Um, it's not a full-scale refit at the moment, so we're not going all out. But now what I need to do is go and put a coat of paint up front, and then those winches that I've pulled apart and serviced, we're going to put them in place and bed them down with a bit of butyl tape, so um, you know it's a nice waterproof installation. And then we'll be pretty close to done. We've drilled holes in the boat and now we've got to stick something in them. And that something is going to be some countersunk machine screws and a winch base. So I'm just going to seal it up with butyl tape ever since meeting our mate Alan in Townsville. And he gave us a roll of butyl tape. It's sort of changed my life a bit because bedding in deck fittings just couldn't be any easier. You sort of run a little sausage of, of butyl around there and I'll just pop it into the winch base and that, that helps to um, that helps to just hold it in there for the next step but it's also that'll squash in there and, and uh, start a degree of waterproofing but then all you have to do is get a nice generous blob of butyl and run it just around the base there like that and what I've done is where the holes have been drilled through the deck for, to receive this, this screw, I've countersunk it ever so slightly. So when this um, goes into the deck and is pulled tight, that will go into the little uh, cone-shaped countersink and then press out all sides, and that will make an incredibly watertight bedding. So when you, when you are bedding in deck fittings with butyl tape, there's another nice, a few nice characteristics about it. It never sets. So when you're using polysulfides or whatever that you've been using in the in the past, hopefully not that clear bathroom silicon. <laughs> There's a few boats with that stuff on there. Um, whenever you're using that stuff, you have to let it cure. So what you'll generally do, and we we did it when we were using the uh, when I was fitting the anchor winch, is you fit it and then you don't compress it all the way. You bring it together. Then you let it cure and it sort of forms a custom rubber gasket if you like and then you nip it up tight and that gives you your water tightness. Butyl never cures. It always stays 
soft, all right? And it sort of, as we, as we bring it um, together, you tighten it most of the way and then later on I'll just nip things up again because under pressure it sort of flows into all the gaps, but it never sets. So that means it remains like really, really flexible all its life. If there's any movement, you know, I'm betting in deck winches, so hopefully they don't move. Um, but any movement or anything like that, it doesn't fracture and shear it. And that was the problem we had with our, our hatch there, that over the years, um, sooner or later with the hatch coming up, back, up, back, and, and, and weight being put on it, there was just a little fracture happened in the Sikaflex and we had a seeping, tiny little leak. Not a big deal on a boat like Marul, but if we'd had a, um, a balsa cord ceiling, really bad. But it'll sort of uh, immune to that. And when it comes time to pull this deck fitting off, even if I want to re-bed it again, this won't, it won't have glued it down. It'll just come out. Yes, it'll be a little bit messy, but it won't be a big deal. And another nice thing is if you just stick butyl to whatever, you know, once, once you've finished bedding this stuff down, it'll it'll squeeze out of the edges. If you did that with um, if you did that with Sikaflex or a number of other things, it's a it's a messy cleanup. But with butyl, you just get another bit of butyl. <laughs> and it just it just grabs it straight off there. So it is wonderful. Thank you, Alan. We're still using your roll. Look, I've nearly it, it used to be out there, didn't it? But we've uh, we've bedded a lot of stuff with this, and it, it's just really great stuff. So if you haven't discovered the joys of bedding things with butyl tape, you should try it. It's like blue tack. It's so much better. <laughs> Look how easy that is. Like that's, if anyone's used to using Sikaflex, they'll, they'll just be looking at this going, what the? Okay, so here it is. It's all ready to go. I'm trying to, trying to keep that as clean as I can, but this stuff sticks pretty well. Obviously, I don't know if it's obvious, so I'll just bring it up. Now that those um, are bedded with butyl, you don't, want to, you don't want to get a screwdriver and screw those. You want them to go in, you want to hold that tight, and you want to put the nut on, and you want to spin the nut from underneath. Because of course, if this spins, then it's going to affect that goop you've just put in there. It'll, it'll shred it and it'll, it'll tear it down. So that's the only thing to be aware of. When you are bedding in, using this stuff, hold that steady, and the nut threads on to the screw. One thing that's worth pointing out is that all of the waterproof um, bedding is on the outside of the deck. We're not putting any on the inside. And if you are bedding anything in a sailboat, um, only have the waterproofing on the outside. Don't have it on the inside. If the water makes it past, um, if the water makes it past your outer defences, if you want to call it that, you want to see it leaking on the inside of your boat so you can immediately rectify it. You don't want to have it sealed coming in, can't get through here, and it spread through the rest of your boat ceiling. That is bad. So, remember, only seal on the outside. Isn't that right? Ah, good work, baby. All right, have you got your uh, ratchet? Mm, yes. Got That's my ratchet. ratchet. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah. Next one? Okay. Yeah. And that last one? Yeah. Good. Uh, what about the one near the hatch? Just do that again. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Pasky's done a great job down here. We knew she would. Um, and it is waterproof. How do we know? Because we got a hose and we put it on as high a pressure as we could and we squirted everything that we just re-bedded and looked for any little seepage. So there wasn't any. We re-bedded the hatch while we were at it. Um, everything here is really well bedded and you can see that the paint is looking pretty disreputable. And that's, um, we're just going to leave that till we do a, a proper refit because this paint is, you know, it's getting on in years. We did this before we even left Perth. <laughs> so it's, it's had a bit of a hard time. Um, and once we've done a bit of a tour of Tasmania, then we're going to do a proper refit and we'll just leave it till then. So there's no point doing like half a paint job, really. So we're just going to have to live with the inside of the boat looking a little bit scabby for a little bit. All right, we'll just go outside and we'll, we'll see what we've done here.
Okay, so this is this is our reefing setup now. When we come to reef the lines, we've got somewhere nice and secure to sit. You know, there's lots of places where we can clip onto our harnesses when we're using them. But here's our jammers right in front of us, and here's a winch right here, and we can get a handle onto it and really, really swing it. When we're actually out at sea and we're, we're reefing, the boom will be either one way or the other. Um, and depending on which side you sit, because you'll always be on the, on the windward side of the boat for safety, you can reach both of these winches so easily now. So that's really great. So all you do is you make your adjustment to whatever your reefing line is, bam with the jammer, and you're pretty much done. And then as you go back to the cockpit, you can just tie in, uh, tie in your reefing pennants. I don't have any cleats here on deck. Those cleats were held by um, two machine screws. These winches are held by five. If I did want to make it extra secure and I didn't just want to trust the jammer, I can do a tugboat hitch on these. All right. And before I make the line nice and neat on there and, and go back to the cockpit. And that is really, really secure. And it's also really quick to undo. And because it's a tugboat hitch, you can undo it under tension. So that's really nice as well. So I can take tension on, I can release my jammers nicely, and then I can, I can actually control that because it's on the winch. Everything's good, and it works really well. I know it works really well because we're doing this after the fact and we're in Tasmania. <laughs> We've crossed the Bass Strait. It's worked flawlessly, and we're really happy with it. Normally, reefing is done pointing the boat into the wind. Doing it with the mainsail loaded, as we are, wing on wing here, isn't ideal and we were wondering if it would work. With our small sail, we have no problem and our only concern was chafe for the short time that we were reefing, but it hasn't proved to be a problem. We hope you enjoyed the video this week and if so, give it a like and shoot us a comment. If you want free range sailing to continue, there is the option to support production costs through links in the video description. See you next week.